What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to model a spiral staircase inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so with the spiral staircase, what you need to do first is you need to start by modeling your central post because you're gonna work around that. So in this case, we're gonna tap the C key, then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna draw a circle that's uh, one and three quarters of an inch radius, so three and a half inches wide. And so once we've done that, I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it a group so it doesn't merge with anything. And I'm not going to extrude it yet. We'll do that in a minute. So next, let's figure out the number of risers that we need. So in this case, for example, let's say that this was going to need to have a height of maybe eight feet, right? So it's going to go eight feet high like this. Well, what we need to do is we need to make sure that each one of these risers is less than seven inches, right? So I can just come in here and I can just right click on this segment and I can use the divide function. And right here, you can see how this is going to show me how many segments I need, right? So again, all you do is just right click on the segment, click on divide and just move your mouse until you get the shortest number of segments under seven inches. So in this case, we're gonna have 14 segments um, that are gonna be approximately six and seven eighths of an inch. And so notice how what that's done is that's come in here and that's divided this up. So if you forget the number of segments that you had in here, you can just select this and then look in your entity info. You can see how we're gonna have 14 different segments. All right, so now let's make sure that we right click on this line because it's a number of different segments and we put it in a group um, so that this doesn't merge with anything that we draw later either. So we're just going to right click and do a make group. And so now what we need to do is we need to figure out the width of our tread, right? We figured out we're going to have 14 treads and we need to make sure that we have the proper width in here. So I think the requirement is it needs to be a minimum of 26 inches from this point. So we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw a line that's 26 inches right here. So now we know where the width of our stair is going to go. And so I'm going to tap the C key in order to draw a circle. And we're going to draw a circle from this point to this point right here. So now we've kind of roughed out the width of our stair. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the segment count in this circle in order to draw our pieces. So in this case, remember that we want 14 risers, right? We want 14 risers up here. And so I want this to do one full revolution around the middle. So I'm just going to select this edge and I'm going to change the number of segments to 28. Right, and it's 28 because we're gonna draw lines in here in just a second um, in order to draw our stair or in order to create our riser. And so we can use these segments in order to do that. And I'm also gonna assume that this is going to be on the back side, and it's gonna be a little bit wider over here. So I'm gonna draw another circle on the back side that's maybe like we'll give this a radius of three inches. And so you can adjust the radius back here in order to adjust your overall stair width. And so now I'm just gonna use inferencing in order to create a stair. So I'm just gonna use the very end point of these two circles and I'm just gonna draw a line out from this location to this location like this. And make sure that you're drawing it to exactly this point right here. Um, but once you do that, what you have is you have a stair and you can erase out this edge and you can actually erase out the circle around it. And so you can measure this. A lot of the time I'll just drop a quick line in here. So I'll find like the midpoint. And if you look across the midpoint, this has a length of nine and three sixteenths of an inch. I think the requirement for the middle of a stair like this is something like um, seven inches or seven and a half inches. So we should be fine. Um, you can definitely adjust this to whatever size that you want. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to model out this stair, at least to a certain degree. So what I want to do is I'm going to start by double clicking and I'm going to make this a group. Then I'm also going to make this a group right here. So I've got like my, uh, my step piece as well as the central mount piece over here. And so I want to take the central mount piece. I want to draw a circle in here in order to split this up and I wanna erase this face. And so the first thing I'm actually going to do with these is I'm gonna select them both, right click and make them a component. And we're just gonna call this spiral step. So now when we make copies of this, all of the copies are going to retain whatever changes that we make. But the first thing I wanna do with this is I wanna move it up, 
right? Because I don't want my first riser to be on the ground. I want it to be on my first point right here. So now I've moved this up and I can also come in here and I can um, model out a little bit more detail right here. And so we're gonna say that this piece has a thickness of maybe like an inch and you can use the eraser tool. So tap the E key and hold shift and then click along this in order to hide these edges. So this looks a little bit smoother like this. But then we're also going to take this other piece and we're going to give it some thickness as well. So in this case, I'm going to give this a thickness of maybe like 0.75. And then I might also offset it in a little bit. Like if I was going to have like a wood insert or something like that, I might offset this in like this. But this is all just adding a little bit of detail to our stair. We don't need to worry too much about that for right now. So just enough that we've got kind of the detail that we want in here. But then what we need to do is we need to start making copies of the stair. So um, the, the easiest way that I've found to do this with a spiral stair is actually to start by making your copies on one level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the central point right here. I'm gonna tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool and I'm gonna single click on this point. Then I'm gonna move my mouse out and I'm gonna find this point right here. Well, remember, actually, I'm not going to find the middle, I'm going to find the edge. So I'm going to find this point right here. Well, remember that this tool has a copy mode that you can activate by tapping the control key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy that's um, aligned with this point, And then I'm going to type in times, and I'm going to type in a value of 14. Right, so what that's done is that's created 14 copies all the way around the outside here. And this is gonna be important in a second. I know it seems like overkill, but it's not. Um, and I'm also gonna come in here and I think this needs to be a little bit deeper. So I'm just gonna push pull this down maybe another inch for right now. But now what we've got is we've got a series of steps in here at this first riser height. Well now we need to make copies of them from here up. So again, I'm gonna tap the control key and I'm gonna find this bottom base point as a reference. Remember that you tap the M key, click and then tap control to go to copy mode. But then I'm gonna tap the up arrow key to lock this so that it's moving on the blue axis and I'm gonna find this point right here. So now I've created one copy right here. Well, I don't need one copy, I need 13 copies. So I'm gonna type in times 13 and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's given me 14 um, stair risers along here just like this. Well now, all we have to do is just come in here and just select the risers that we wanna keep. And so notice how those make a spiral shape in here. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the invert function of the select tool. What that means is remember how you can hold the shift key to add or subtract things to a selection? Well, we have all of those selected, but we wanna drag a box across them like this. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna deselect everything we had selected and it's gonna select everything else. Well then, if I tap the delete key, what that's gonna do is that's going to leave me with my spiral stair right here. And so then we can come in here and we can push pull this base piece in here up in order to create our central post for our stairs like this. And so we can, we can push pull it to the top right here. And then maybe say that this is going to extend another three foot or something like that. Um, really whatever the height this needs to be, it might go higher because it's probably going to go all the way to the ceiling, but this is going to work for us for right now. So now We've got these pieces in here and we need to add the inserts and we need to add the railings. So the insert, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this whole thing. I'm gonna do a control C and then I'm gonna go outside of this riser group but inside of the component and I'm gonna do a control V right here. And I'm just gonna move this over and I'm gonna align it with this corner point. But then I'm just gonna push pull it up a little bit, give it a little bit of thickness in here. And you can use this to adjust how much this is kind of inset in the space, but then I'm just gonna triple click on it. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna group it. So now I've got a different insert piece in here so I can apply like a wood material to it or something like that. And so the last thing we're gonna worry about in this tutorial, and so now we need to worry about adding a rail. And so the rail is just gonna use the component functionality again. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna start by drawing a circle that represents my vertical post. So in this case, I'm gonna say that this is gonna be two inches off the end. 
I'm going to draw a circle in here that has a radius of maybe like a half inch like this. And then I'm going to push pull it up. But we have a problem in here in the sense that I didn't draw this inside of the component. And so to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object. I'm going to do a control X to cut it. And then I'm going to come over here to this search function and I'm going to look for paste in place. And so we're going to click on the button for paste in place, but only once we go inside of this object. So I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to do a paste in place and you can apply a keyboard shortcut to this, by the way. Um, but for now, we're just going to use the one in the search function. And so this is inside of my object, which means that when I push pull it up, since we're in a component, all of the others are going to get push pulled up as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull these up to maybe like three foot six like this in order to add my posts. And then I'm just going to take this post, triple click on it, and we'll go ahead and we'll make it a component and we'll just call this vertical post. Well, now what I need to do is I need to add the path that this is going to follow. So I'm going to tap the L key to add a line. And then I'm going to draw a line from this point to this point right here. And so what that does is that basically gives you a path along which you can extrude a railing. Okay, and so we've got a little bit of a problem if we try to create this rail, right? Because what we've done in the past is we've come in here and we've modeled out whatever our rail profile is. So something like this. I'm going to scale it out and maybe down. What we've done in the past is we've used the follow me tool to extrude this along this profile right here. And so if we do this though, all the way to this point, notice how this is going to have gaps in here, right? So that's not necessarily what we want. So what we need is we need this whole path available to us. And so the way that we can do that is we're actually going to take the whole thing and we're just going to make a copy right here. And, and so we can't just cut this out of here because it's a part of a component or a series of components, right? So that's why I'm creating a copy over here. I'm just going to take all of these and I'm just going to explode them. So I'm basically getting rid of that component functionality that's in here. But what that does is that allows me to come in here and select this path. And then I can do that shift trick again, right? Where I hold shift to select everything else and deselect what I had selected. That's going to leave me the path right here. And then you can come over here and you can delete out the edge from this component. But now we're going to take this, we're going to move it back so that it's aligned with our central point. All right. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a circular rail. So I'm just going to come in here. We're just going to draw a rail like this. And what I want to do is I want to activate the follow me tool and click on this point. I just want to extrude this up along the surface. Now, one thing I do want to know, and this is currently a limitation of the free version of SketchUp. I don't have a way around this. Maybe somebody else does. But if I try to do this with this flattened piece right here, notice how it starts to twist. So it starts to twist. See, it turns almost vertical over here. That's a little bit of a problem. I currently don't have a workaround for that. So this works great for rails that are kind of symmetrical like this. But if you need to create a more complex rail profile, um, you're going to have to use some extensions in the pro version in order to make that work. Because at the moment that twist makes it so anything that isn't like 100% round or symmetrical just doesn't look very good. So um, for this simple rail, this works great. And you might take this and just extrude it a little further um, past this rail right here. It doesn't have to be perfect most of the time unless you're showing like a specific product or something like that. So usually I'll just push it past like this. And now you've got a spiral stair with a rail in here. And you could triple click in here to select the whole thing. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on the button and I'm going to click on the display button. And so there's a button in here for smooth edges. We want to click on that. And we also want to check the box for soften coplanar. But then if I come in here and I adjust this angle function up or down, notice how it's hiding all that extra geometry in here so that we don't get those clunky edges at the intersections right here. 
All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Remember that I have like 47 days to try to pass SketchUp before Basecamp. I've got a lot of great content coming out in the next couple months, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.